Hi everyone, I'm Ayla, the science educator for Ocean First Institute. Many of our recent online resources have focused on sharks, like where they come from and their senses. One question we often get is, how do sharks stay afloat? And it's a good question. You think of a shark as being heavier than water, and usually when something's heavy, it sinks, but not in the case of sharks. Sharks, and indeed many other fish, achieve something called neutral buoyancy, which you might be familiar with if you've watched some of our other videos. To refresh your memory, neutral buoyancy is when something is suspended in the water column, neither corking to the surface, which is positive buoyancy, or sinking to the bottom, which is negative buoyancy. In the case of sharks, they're not going to be successful at hunting or migrating if they're floundering at the surface or stuck on the bottom, so they have to achieve neutral buoyancy, just like a human diver or an underwater robot might. Many bony fish achieve neutral buoyancy via their swim bladders, which is a gas-filled chamber, and gas being lighter than water, allows them to stay afloat. However, sharks don't have a swim bladder, so how do they float? Well, for one, instead of having bones, sharks are what are called cartilaginous creatures, or made up of the same material that forms our upper ear, cartilage. But cartilage is still denser than water, so the question becomes, how do sharks stay afloat? Let's find out. For this experiment, you're going to need a deep bowl or tub of water, vegetable oil, some hair ties or rubber bands, coins, and plastic containers that were on their way to your recycling bin. Many of us probably don't have many single-use plastic items around the house, so rummage through your recycling bin to find anything that can work. It just needs to be lighter than water. You're going to start by seeing what would happen if a fish didn't have a swim bladder or a shark didn't have a way to stay afloat by filling one of these bottles with water. You want to make sure to get all of the air bubbles out before you screw the lid on. Now, just like a fish has more body mass, we're going to go ahead and attach a quarter to this that'll simulate bones. If you did our neutral buoyancy activity, you probably remember how we attached various different things like coins and paper clips to see what would cause certain animals to sink or float. Once you've attached your quarter, we're going to see what would happen to a fish if it had no buoyancy device whatsoever. Predictably, it sinks. Now let's see how fishes with swim bladders use these. Basically, you're just gonna take an empty plastic bottle and screw on the top so it's filled with air or gas like a fish's swim bladder would be. Again, you'll wanna simulate the fish's other density and mass, like bones, with the quarter. When we put this in the water, it floats. Now, like I said, a shark doesn't have that gas-filled swim bladder, so what does it have? This is where your vegetable oil will come in. Go ahead and fill this plastic bottle up part of the way with vegetable oil. Screw on the lid. And again, because sharks don't have bones but have cartilage, we're going to use a slightly lighter coin this time. Once you've attached the coin, I want you to see the difference between this and this. The one that sank is going to be a little bit heavier, but not by much. And this, with the vegetable oil, is going to feel significantly heavier than our air-filled bladder. So what happens when something's heavier than water? Well, it sinks, right? Except not in the case of a shark's liver, which is its oily part of the body that makes sure that it doesn't sink. In fact, for sharks, their oily liver is going to be almost 30% of their body mass. And because oil is less dense than water, or floats, this allows the shark to stay neutrally buoyant. The fact that oil is lighter than water can prove disastrous for things like oil spills, but in the case of a shark, it makes it so it can effectively hunt, swim, and migrate without sinking to the bottom of the ocean. Thanks for joining me for another at-home ocean science activity, and check the link in the description of this video for more ways you can explore shark biology from right at home. Thanks so much!